Hi, um, thanks for watching. Um, today we're going to talk about um, a series coming up in January which is surprisingly interesting. Um, Pakistan and England playing in the UAE. Um, as I said before about Pakistan's home series in the UAE, I think it's a really good thing. Um, and this series, probably 12 months ago, looked like it would be a pretty boring series. I don't think many people picked Pakistan to, to do a lot of damage in the last 12 months, but they certainly have to give you an idea of what their run has been. They drew against South Africa in the UAE about a year ago. They drew 1-1 in New Zealand. Uh, they drew 1-1 in the West Indies. They beat Zimbabwe 1-0. They beat Sri Lanka 1-0 in the UAE. And beat Bangladesh 2-0. Not the creme de la creme in terms of the class of their opponents, but still very, very good results um, for a team that most people thought was a, was a pretty bad one. Um, including me, for that matter. Um, they've done very well. For England, the reason why they're interested in this series is because of their play in Asia. They actually haven't played in Asia since 2008, December 2008, so it's been three years, over three years, since they've played in Asia. That was a famous series against India. Um, we'll start talking about England first. Um, people are concerned about how they play in, in Asia because they haven't done it for a long time, certainly not with this current iteration of England, which is supposed to be so good, and I, I certainly think it is very good. Um, and I guess people are, A, just want to see it, and B, they might think, well, okay, two things about England, again, 12 months ago, they relied on swing bowling, and new ball bowling, and they didn't seem to be a particularly dominating batting card. They seemed to be a deep batting card, with a lot of options down at 9, and even down to 9 and 10, but not really a kind of batting card that would be able to put 500 or 600 on the board. That second concern, I think it's pretty clearly been laid. Um, Jonathan Trott's been going berserk, Ian Bell's been going berserk, Alistair Cook especially has been going berserk. Um, and they have been putting on 500 plus routinely. It hasn't been much of a concern for the English. Um, with the bowling side of things, yeah, look, they, they do they do need fast bowling and they do rely on it with Anderson and, and Tremlett slash Bresnan. I think Bresnan will be playing a lot in this series. Um, but they also have the world's best slow bowler still in Graham Swan. Graham Swan has not had a great 2011, but he hasn't had a terrible one either. Um, he's taking 3.4 wickets a match, which is still quite good, at 34.22, which is less good, and a con rate of 3.19, which is very much less good. So there have been some problems there. Um, part of it has been he just hasn't been getting the overs. Uh, a lot of the time it's been the pace bowls have been so dominant that Graham Swan's been bowled in very odd little spells, three or four over spells, not able to get into a rhythm. Um, but I'm not going to blame it all on that. He's been below par and he needs to play better. And this is the series that he will definitely be targeting. I would be very surprised if Graham Swan had to target this series as, as a big one for him. Um, the last time he played in Asia um, against the Indians, so that, that Indian series, took eight wickets at, at 39.5. So, you know, the, the reservations people have about England and Asia probably come to some degree with Graham Swan, um, more or less unproven in Asia, um, having that larger role than he has in England. Um, to actually lead the attack rather than being a, a nice sort of bonus of sneaking up on teams, which you may have done. So that will be something that needs to be seen, and we need to see whether or not Swan is as good as, as we thought he was, and, and that will be important. But to give you another idea, they did play, pa play Pakistan last year in 2010. Um, probably not quite as good a, a version of Pakistan as we've now seen, but still 5.5 wickets at 12.22 in those games. So a very impressive record against Pakistan. So it's not all doom and gloom for Swan. Uh, there are reasons there to believe that he'll be he'll be just fine, um, but yeah, batting is there in terms of making centuries. Swan, um, let's not give up on him just yet. Um, one concern with England will be the depth in their bowling. They don't still don't have a fifth ball. They may change that now. I think that they will seriously be looking at playing Bresnan and maybe Tremlett as well, or, or another slow bowler, Panesar maybe, um, and, and because they're so deep in the batting. Bresnan, Broad, and Swan. If you bat them at, at sort of um, seven, eight, nine. You know, you're not going to lose much bat prize, the best keeper bats in the world. So, if there's ever a team that can play five bowlers, and probably should, this is probably the team. Um, Pakistan. Um, had a great year, as I said. I think most people probably thought they'd be the worst team in the world. Um, they were in the West Indies. And, and really, they played what being Sri Lanka was a really big deal. Um, you know, holding their own on away tours, even if in, even though they are in New Zealand and the West Indies. Um, drawing away for a team like Pakistan is a really good accomplishment. Um, the key, I think, has been the opening partnership um, for Pakistan. Um, there's a lot of little keys, but that's probably the main key as far as I'm concerned. Pakistan's opening partnership has been poor since Syed Amwar left, really. They haven't really ever solved the problem, even when they had a really good team with uh, Yusuf and Inzamam and, and Yunus. They never actually had that, that strength at the top, so they were constantly getting exposed. 
it's still not great. Don't, don't get me wrong. It's not suddenly they haven't suddenly become you know Hayden Langer at the top there. But um, in the last 17 innings, so that's going back from those series, starting in that South Africa series, they drew nil nil. Um, they're averaging one for 32. So 32 wickets for th- sorry 32 runs for their average partnership. Not great. Not going to blow anyone away, but not a disaster either. Uh, they've had in those 17 five times they've passed 50 and, um, uh, between the two, and twice they've got 100 plus. It's still a work in progress. Muhammad Afiz and Tawfiq Omar up there, but there's stability up there now, and they are producing some results. Some results. You know, as I say, it's still time to go, but it's not a disaster that it once was. That, in turn, is freeing up the options down the card. Still Eunice Khan's card. Um, Eunice actually hasn't been averaged below 50 in a calendar year since 2003, which is pretty amazing. 85 this year, uh, 50% score percentage. Um, so he's, he's batting again great, he's always so consistent, um, as those numbers imply. Um, I mean, Barrel Huck sort of come along as well, um, an unusual sort of player. He's averaging 66.4 the last two years, again scoring in half of his innings. He only has one century in the last two years, so he's not uh, that kind of player. He's sort of, if you like, um, a, I don't want to say Shandipal, because Shandipal has got a lot of centuries in the past, but sort of like a Michael Bevan for Test cricket kind of thing. Score oriented a guy, kind of guy that Pakistan need, a lot of consistency, sort of a calm head on his shoulders, uh, a good leader of that batting card, and a leader of the team for that matter. Um, so put those two together, and you've got sort of a functioning batting card. It's not been fantastic, but it's certainly held its own, um, albeit, as I said, against lesser bowling attacks than they're going to face against the English. Um, with the bowling side of things for Pakistan, it's really revolved around Syed Ajmal. It's been a Syed, a- Syed Ajmal attack, really. There's been a few other guys like Junaid Khan and Mohab Riaz will be back for this and um, Umar Gul is always steady and a few other guys. But basically, Sayed Ajmal, the, the off-break bowler, is basically the, the key to their attack. Taking 6.3 wickets a match this year. I think he's the leading wicket taker in tests this year, which is pretty amazing. Uh, taking a 23.86. He's bowling nearly 61 overs a match. I've seen Sayed Ajmal. I'm not really a fan. Um, uh, but I... That was a good couple of years ago now, so he may have improved. I've seen little bits and pieces of those series, um, and he, he had some penetration. Good top spinner. Um, and he's really the guy that England will have to deal with because Pakistan's idea is to put him front and centre of that bowling attack and just bowl side Ajma down one end and um, and rotate some young pace bowls. Junaid Khan had a really big series against Sri Lanka, so I'll be interested to see whether he can, he can follow that up too. Um... Ultimately, I think England's got too much. I, I do understand the, the reservations about Asia, and there's some, there's some real reasons to think that, but they have just passed every conceivable test. Um, you know, they have, be- they have not just beaten, they, they drubbed India, they drubbed Sri Lanka, they drubbed Australia in a way. Um, Pakistan, yes, they've improved a lot. Yes, they, <laughs> they look like potentially the best team in Asia at the moment. Um, but they're, they're not at this standard just yet. Uh, and just simply playing in Asia is not going to be enough, I don't think, to, to reverse that entirely. Um, they're playing three tests. I do think that Pakistan can sneak a draw. I do think that that's feasible. Um, but if you look at the way England, they're, they're clearly the best team in the world at the moment. And you look at the way South Africa, for instance, have slipped up just one too many times. It's just impossible to keep defending them at this stage. It's just so hard. And they keep losing test matches. So it's one or two, it's always. Um, and India, ditto, um, have lost their last or well, last five tests against high quality opposition away from home. Um, England look at the gold standard, and um, I think that even if they do have a few bumps on the road and a few rough innings and rough days in Asia, they'll be able to pull this series out. They'll do it two nil. I think Pakistan's batting, as I say, has improved a lot. And I think England's lack of bowling depth potentially, and just again working out a few of the kinks might, um, I mean, particularly that first test might get drawn. Um, but I don't expect them to beat England. Uh, I think England will be coming back. Um, with uh, with an even inflated reputation from um, from passing the first of their Asian tests. Thanks very much for watching, guys. I'll see you soon.